Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool arcade game repair video for you today. We are working on this Rockola 445 jukebox. And if you didn't see the first video, go watch it. But this is the next video. So actually, I think that there's going to be two videos before this. So there may have been two videos. So this might be the third one, but the links will be down below. So go check it out. But we've gotten this thing to the point where it's playing and selecting. Um, but we, it doesn't, I've got a list over here of all the stuff that we still need to do to it. So here's what we've got left to do. It won't hang up the record because the gear is still not quite moving as good as it should. Uh, we need to rebuild the amplifier. We need to set it on free play. We need to clean it. We need to fill it up with records. And we need to print the title strips for the records. So we're going to try to do that or most of that in this video. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the amplifier and we're going to recap the amplifier. Okay, folks, so this is the Rockola 45730-1-A IC stereo amplifier. I'm going to show you the ICs here in a minute. That's kind of funny. Um, it's got some settings. So this is where you uh, plug in, oh no, right here is where you plug in the um, pickup. Uh, it's got a scratch filter to filter out some of the scratches. <laughs> it's got a stereo and mono switch. Auto volume control. You can turn on or you can turn it off to test. Um, it's got a bass adjustment and a treble adjustment. It's got a low impedance speaker's power. I don't know what that is. Phono speaker's power. So we'll look into that. I'm sure it tells you all that in the manual. It had some places where stuff plugs in. It's got a mute relay that we might have to clean. Um, and behind this panel are the um, transistors that amplify everything. And you've got these two transformers here. So we'll turn it over and look inside of it. So inside it you've got a couple boards. And uh, my goal is to replace as many of these caps as I can. You've got these caps over here too. These um, where they have several in one can with different leads on the bottom. So I don't know if I'm going to be replacing those or not. You can, but I don't know if I've got the right size caps. But we'll look into that, I guess. Um, but basically, I'm just going to go through and replace all of the caps that I can. And then put everything back. But you heard that in the previous video that the thing's actually working. So it was already working. So they call this the integrated circuit amplifier, but it's from 1970, something like that. So by IC, what they mean is there are two IC chips in the whole thing. So that's like the left channel and the right channel or something like that. Everything's uh, pretty much done the old way, but they're not using they're not using uh, tubes anymore. So we replaced all the electrolytic capacitors. It's looking pretty good. These big ones were a little bit of a problem because I didn't have the exact thing, so I put I had to use uh, radials and put a couple together. They were 1200 UF. Um, but I zip tied them in place and made sure they don't stick out and they can't touch anything and all that. So We should be good to go. So I'm going to mount it back in there and then I guess we'll try playing it again just to make sure that both channels are working. Okay, folks, so the next thing we have to fix is it's not picking up the record right and it's not sitting down the record right. And the reason for that is because of all of the grease in this gear. In the first video, I got it to free up by just oiling the heck out of it. But there's still grease down inside of this shaft. So I took the little end plug off and you can't, basically you have to take it apart to clean it. Sometimes you get lucky and you can just oil it, but there's so much stuff in there. So I've got it. It's it's uh, I've got it in the off position. It's trying to operate though and pick up a record right now. So the problem that you have is the way all this works is that shaft turns in the back, and so there's torque on it. So what's going on is when it picks up the record, that shaft is turning. So what it's supposed to do is turn, which makes this piston come out to where it can grab the record. But what's happening is the torque of the shaft turning with all of the grease on there, it's making it lift up a little bit first. So it's lifting up and then pulling in, which means that it grabs the record right on the end. And when it sets it down, it's too far this way. So it misses the circle and it kind of flops on there. And so 
it should basically be able to push that piston out first, but the, just the inertia of it and the grease is making it pick up. So this there's the reason it's doing that is because there's too much uh, friction basically from all of that old gummy grease that's in there. And you had this problem like every Rockola. So I needed I need to have it. There's that much play in it, and I need to have it where if it's like that, it will immediately fall back down. But you see how it's slowly going back down? That's because that grease is keeping it that way. So I'm going to put it in operate, let it continue doing its thing. So it would have picked up the record and then laid it down. All right? So let's see if I can do this with one hand. Um, basically, we're going to get it to the end of the record. And uh, whenever I put it back in operate, that's an old needle, so don't worry about the needle. Whenever I put it in operate, you'll see that this will jump up a little bit, which is the same exact thing going on. You see how it jumped up and then fell back down? What it's doing is it's jumping up from the, the just the torque of the thing. If this was loose like it should be and well oiled, it shouldn't do that. So now I've got, see how it just falls like that it should immediately slap back down basically but since it's doing that it's because the you see how it's turning here and then it's slow to go back basically I've got to take this apart and get all the old grease out of it oil it and put it back together and it'll be fine if you kept messing with it you might get it to where it would loosen up enough to where it would fall good enough but if you want it if you want it where it always pulls in first before lifting up you really got to clean it out so we're going to try to take it apart and clean it all right so this is how it is in the machine and the way you take this whole damn thing apart is this little pin right there number 25 it comes out the back of that and then that comes off that comes out this can come out everything comes apart after that um so that's what we're going to do i'm going to take some pictures of it in its resting place first though to make sure i get it all back together how it's supposed to be all right, so on this model, it had the, the little operate switch was right there. So there's two bolts holding it on. I just took it loose because that little pin hole is right there. So I just used a little tiny screwdriver. Tapped it a little bit with a mallet. And now the pin is sticking out the back. So I'm going to pull that out. And when I do, this is going to come loose and this is going to come loose. Okay, so I got the pin out, which let this come out and let this come out. Once that was out, the gripper bar up bow come out. And so once all that's out, you're down to this. So there was a little screw on the back that I took off that's holding a little thing on. And so once you got that off, the black sleeve inside has those gears on it, but you can't take them off the way it's situated when the with a gripper bar down the gripper bow down because the gears are meshed in with the gear under it but if you turn it up you, you i think i'm going to try it but i think you've got a clear shot where it'll just push right off the back again but you really have to keep all of this you know where you have it lined up the same when you put it back to make sure that you don't uh get the gear in the wrong spot and all that okay so you can see what i mean with it turned vertically like that the gears at the bottom line up with the gears on the bottom. See this flat spot? Whenever you have it laying down, that flat spot is behind the gears, so you can't push it off the end. But once you turn it with the, the gnarled knob on the bottom of the motor, once you turn it to where the gripper bow would be straight up in the air, uh, you've got all the gears lined up with the gears below, and you can just simply push it right off the end of the thing. But we have to make sure that we align it all back exactly like this when we put it back. But that black sleeve, I was able to just push out like that. Okay, folks, so there's that shaft after I've cleaned it up the best I can. It had all kinds of sticky, gooey, dried up grease on it. I keep saying it's WD-40. I'm not so sure because there was so much of it. It may have just been some kind of old grease. Um, I'm just going to use oil, though. So hopefully it won't do the same. But if it does, we'll take it back apart 10 years from now. <laughs> but that goes in there like that with the arm straight up in the air. Um, of course, that's where the gripper arm passes through it, that little shaft that we were messing with. So uh, I'm going to clean the housing that that goes into, and then we'll slide it all back together. 
All right, folks, so that's how it looks cleaned back up, and you can see how it's real loose now. That's how you want it. So I'm going to push it back down to where it goes and uh, put the gripper arm back on. So we got it all cleaned up, got it all back together. I believe we're good to go. Let's see if it picks up the record good, lays it down good, and then we'll cancel it and see if it picks it uh, back up good. it up good laid it right down I've got the I've got the volume all the way down Let's see if we can cancel it picked it up good BAM put it back in its spot should go back to the home position Whew. I think we got a fully working jukebox people so uh, what we need to do now is uh, do some more cleaning put the thing back on I got to figure out about free play uh, and we're going to, uh, of course, fill it up with records, put all the record title strips in it. Those go up in here and you can just, this particular model, you can just lay these down, slide them right in. I'll show you how we print those out. But So we'll pick 50 good records, get it all ready to go, start cleaning everything. And uh, the thing about free play, if you leave it where there are credits on it, it leaves this solenoid pulled in all the time and it can burn up. So I don't know if, uh, I've heard that, that'll, that that's not a good idea. But I'm gonna look into it. They may have fixed that by the time this model came out. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do a little research on that and I'll come back and talk about that a little bit. But uh, we're ready to clean it up. We're ready to uh, fill it full of records and print out a bunch of title strips. So this is how we print out title strips. If you go to jukeboxrebel.com and then go up to the top they have a little spot that says title strips you click that and then you click online title strip creator and you can just type in whatever you want so we did roll on by alabama so you type the title there and then we're going to type alabama here uh, and then down here you can change your colors so we'll pick green uh we'll say yes put a background on it we'll helvetica font and we'll do large and so once you get it all typed in you hit create PDF and check that out. Simple as that. And then you can print that out and uh, put them in the box. So that's what we're going to do. So we've got it all filled up, got our title strips in there, got it cleaned up pretty good, got the door back on it. We had to, we got to clean down there a little bit, but we got. These things were cracked, so we had to tape them back where they go. Um, we got it filled up with records. So here's the inside with all the records in it. It's looking good. It's sounding good. We had to make two minor adjustments because of a couple records. So some the records have different um, lead-in grooves where the needle sets down, and then. Uh, run out grooves you know so when this comes over you can adjust where it sets down on the record so we had one record where it was setting down and actually missing the edge of the record I guess the record's slightly smaller or something so the way you adjust that is you take this screw loose and then you you just barely move this little bracket and I mean barely if you can see it move that's enough and so by moving it, you're basically changing the angle that this is to this, and that changes where it lays down on the record. So you had to mess with that a little bit, but it's real simple. It's that little screw. And then to, to change where it picks back up at the end, you don't want it to have to go all the way in to the runout groove, that last circle. You don't want it to have to go all the way there. So, you know, the reason you don't want it to do that is because if it, if the record's made slightly different, that groove might be slightly farther in, and then it'll get stuck in the groove and it'll never pick up. So what I like to do is take a record that's pretty full. This one's, you know, fairly full. And then I like to try to have it pick up about two-thirds of the way through to the the runout groove. So back this way just a little bit, you know. And that's another thing you can tinker with. But the way you change that is this little screw here. 
basically if you tighten it clockwise it pushes the screw through farther and that screw hits a little switch on the other side don't mess with the switch just ch just adjust that screw in to make it pick up sooner and pull it out if it's picking up before the end of the song you need to get like a really long record too you know free bird or something and uh stairway to heaven something put it on and whenever it gets because it'll use more of the the wax you know before the groove so you want to make sure it doesn't pick up before the end of the song but with that we've got it all ready it came out pretty nice good looking little box so what i'm going to do is uh, now that we've got it all done i'm going to um film a separate video of us kind of just reading over it and showing it off, showing it off and then we'll uh we'll play some music on it and you can see what you think it sounds like so i hope you enjoyed the video uh, if you have any questions put them down below give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you make sure to subscribe to us if you don't and have you ever seen this particular model a rock roller 445 if you have let us know where and uh, look out for those videos we're going to put up uh, of us playing it so you can see what it sounds like the reason we can't do it right now is because youtube monetizes all of the videos of of music so if I play one of these songs right now, uh, they may delete the video at their discretion at any time. So uh, what I do is I put those on a separate video, so if they delete it, all this stuff isn't deleted. Uh, but look out for the other video. Leave your comments below, and we will... Oh, free play! I forgot to talk about free play. I looked up free play, and basically there's no good option. <laughs> so the, the, uh, the coin Mac has been removed, and what they did was they went into the credit unit, and there's a little tooth in there that every time you play a song, it subtracts one of the credits. There's a little wheel. And if you take that tooth off, it never subtracts one of the credits. So that's what they've done. And the, the problem is, like I mentioned, it leaves this solenoid energized all the time. Right? Uh, in a home setting, that's just kind of what you're going to have to deal with. The, the, there's only three things you can do. You can leave it where it takes quarters, but I don't have the coin mech because the operator took it out. The operators would do that and set it on free play for somebody's house. Um, so that they couldn't possibly operate it and be their competition, you know. Um, but it does leave this solenoid energized all the time. So if you leave the thing on constantly, 24 hours a day, that thing will get kind of hot, and you might get in a situation where that solenoid burns up. Uh, okay, so you can you can leave the you can leave the coin mech in it. That's one way. You can put it on free play like this one's been done. That's two ways. Or you can actually add like a button or something to the uh, contacts on the coin mech and put it on the exterior of the machine where you add a credit and then play it. But we've done stuff like that before and homeowners aren't that happy with that. So they would prefer to have it like this. The worst case scenario is that solenoid could go bad and then they'd have to replace it. But if you don't use it nonstop, leave it on for every hour of every day you're probably going to be fine who knows how long it's been like this already so we're going to leave it people so leave your comments below give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you and we will see you on the next video